Okay. Um, good morning, Teach Nation. Isang maganda umaga sa lahat ng mga tagapakinig at tagasubaybay ng Teach Webinar Series ng Adiba Publishing House. Isang karangalan po mula sa isang guru na katulad ko na maging bahagi ng knowledge sharing community na ito ng Adiba Publishing House. Maraming maraming salamat po, pauna ko na, sa pagkakataon na magbahagi po ng aking kaalaman kaugnay ng napapanahon po na paksa uko sa online teaching po ng mga kaguruan. I am Mr. Ryan Villapuerte Lansangan. I am a faculty member of the Junior High School Department of the University of Santo Tomas. This morning, I will be sharing with you my online teaching experience entitled Reach Out. We will discover that word reach out later as I will go through the content of my presentation. I will be um, dis discussing with you the lessons that I have learned in online teaching experience the challenges that I have been through, and the opportunities that I am imagining as we embark into this new normal mode in education this coming school year. Actually, um, it was after Holy Week last April when the marketing manager of Abiba invited me to, to be part of this Teach Webinar series. But I was thinking that time uh, my background about online teaching was not sufficient to share my expertise sa inyo po. Um, di ba, siyempre, mahirap naman na makapagbahagi ng isang paksa kapag hindi mo siya na-experience. So what happened? Um, I was invited by, by my professor in the Philippine Normal University in a localized webinar entitled Coffee Talk. And I was invited there to grace the pilot episode wherein they want to listen to me about the, the online teaching experiences that I had in the University of Santo Tomas. And through that, um, I was encouraged by the editor-in-chief of Kapisanan Kimika ng Pilipinas or the Chemical Society of the Philippines to, to publish my work about this so, um, online teaching experience during the community quarantine season. And when it was published, Mangkora, the marketing manager of Abiba, messaged me if it is possible for me to share with you, my dear teachers, my experience about online teaching. So in other words, uh, on this session, I will be sharing with you the content of this qualitative research, but it is more personalized as compared to uh, a, a much more peer na mga research because I will be narrating to you what are the specific lessons that I have learned, the challenges along the way in embarking into online teaching. Okay. Uh, before I start with the presentation, allow me first to uh, contextualize my presentation. I am a faculty member, a junior, junior high school teacher uh, from the University of Santo Tomas, uh, the oldest existing university in Asia. Uh, I am already spending my 11 years there as a full-time chemistry teacher, grade nine teacher, just like you for my dear teachers. Um, currently, um, I am um, handling the position of head teacher in the grade nine level in which I am responsible uh, in trans in trans uh, cascading the communication coming from the administration going to the, the students in the grade level and the teachers in the grade level. Now, um, I am teaching there since 2009 um, as a chemistry teacher, as I have mentioned a while ago. And during the ECQ, um, our school is already on the third quarter of the school year. Unlike your school, marami sa inyo, yung mga school nyo, nung dineclare ang ECQ sa Metro Manila, almost nasa end na kayo ng school year. Pero kami, during the time, third periodical examination namin. So meaning, we still have one more quarter to complete the cycle of the school year. That's why um, we embarked into online teaching because of the um, implementing guidance set by the, universe, the, by the uh, government in which medyo kailangan magsara yung mga institution. But still, kailangan ng continuity plan pagdating sa learning ng mga estudyante natin. So, bali, ito po yung context na isha-share ko sa inyo mamaya. But I want you to focus more on the identity of the teacher um, along the experiences that I will share para po mas makita po natin saan po yung mga lessons na pwede nating matutunan o di kaya naman ano yung mga possible challenges na posible nyo ma-encounter as you embark this coming school year sa online teaching and learning or sa flexible delivery of instruction. Before my presentation, I would just want to set this one, that the views and opinions to be expressed in the presentation are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect nor represent the views and opinions held by the institution where I am affiliated. Okay. My presentation is 
uh, divided into 20 key points. So I will be narrating all my experiences using these 20 key points. This will be the lessons, the challenges, and the opportunities that we can reimagine in our practice as we start the school year uh, this coming August. Okay, let me have the first one. The first one is mapping out of learner's profile. Okay, when I say mapping out of uh, learner's profile, we need to know first the profile of our learners or our um, clients in our institution. In our institution, when the ECQ was declared in Metro Manila and the university decided to continue teaching and learning in education, we deployed this survey, the connectivity survey of our junior high school students for us to know what would be the possible modalities that we can employ to them. Since it is a new normal, we will not be doing face-to-face -face instruction. Instead, it's an online teaching and learning. So that's what we did. We focused on asking them, where do they currently reside? What gadgets do they use? Where did they usually do their online activities? And do they have accessibility and internet connection? Or what would be the download speed of their um, gadgets or internet connection? And what would be the, the provision of webcam or microcom sa kanila po mga bahay? But this profile is technical in nature. Technical po ito. What was good in our experience is, kilala na namin yung mga studyante namin. Meaning, third quarter na siya. More or less, as advisor, as subject teachers, kilala namin yung mga studyante namin. That's why we focus merely on identifying the profile of our learners when it comes to technicalities like this one, which I think you will acknowledge this one as one of the challenges in executing remote teaching in our institution. Another is, I would just like to contextualize this sharing na we embarked into an emergency remote teaching, meaning from the face-to-face -face in which we are used to, we, we have this transition going to online teaching. So it's again, it is expected na there are challenges along the way and we're expected to become flexible and to conform to these challenges. Pero kayo po, mga dear teachers all over the Philippines, as we start your school year, whenever you map out learnings profile, Whenever you map out learning's profile, it is also good to understand first yung mga learning style ng mga estudyante natin, ano ba yung kanilang mga interest, ano yung kanilang motivation, para more or less makapag-establish po tayo ng rapport sa kanila. And at the same time, we can um, use this data, for example, yung mga learning styles nila o yung mga interest nila in drafting um, curricular contents or instructions sa mga estudyante po natin. Mm, it is suggested that in the beginning of the school year, we need first to establish the rapport between students. So pwede tayong mag alat for example, first few weeks of the school year, getting to know muna, dapat medyo maging use muna ang estudyante natin doon sa gagamitin natin na platform. O di ka naman, dapat alam natin kung ano ba yung mga pinanggagalingan ng mga estudyante natin. Ma-access -ma ba nila yung instruction natin? O di kaya naman ay... Um, magiging madali ba yung communication between them and also the parents. So that's, I think, one of the opportunities that we can venture in as we start our flexible learning delivery this kind of school year. We need to map out learners' profile. We need to know them. Ito, different ito sa first day natin in the previous school year. Kasi dati, pag face-to-face -face tayo, madali yan eh. Magpapakilala sa teacher, magsasurvey sa teacher, di ba? Magpapakilala yung mga classmates. And then, probably from there, you can actually set your of class rules, pero ito, we are virtually divided, probably if it is online, or we are divided by just a material, like for example, in the case of module. So medyo, it is a challenge among us, pero since we are creative teachers, I think we can find ways on how to explore about the learning profile of our students. The second key point is, of course, we need to streamline the contents. During the time uh, the ESIC was declared in Metro Manila, wala pang most essential learning competencies na release ang Department of Education. So what we did through the initiative of our uh, learning area coordinators, they instructed us to identify what are the essential na mga concept na pwede lang namin ma-deliver um, in an online setting. Okay? Here, we need to focus on the essential ideas. How do we want our subject become relevant to our learners? Paano ma-appreciate ng mga learners natin yung subject natin in an online setup? So probably here, what we consider together with my other subject teachers in the grade level, we identify the conceptual knowledge and the procedural knowledge. 
because there we can easily um, come up with a plan wherein kailan i-execute yung lesson na to? Synchronous ba to or asynchronous natin gagawin? Kasi depende. Especially that I am a chemistry teacher, it is important for me to relate the message of the lesson kasi yung chemistry, meron siya ibang jargon, iba yung genre niya, iba yung language niya. So, importante na maintindihan to ng bata. So, what we did during that time, our lesson lessons were um, gas loss and organic chemistry. We thought of giving first gas loss kasi medyo procedural to, computation to in nature. So, probably because they have already the background in mathematics, madali nilang masusundan yung konsepto. So, we decided to deploy that asynchronously. And then sa organic chemistry, we decided to have that synchronous fee. But from time to time, nakikita namin through the results of the uh, communications sa kanila tsaka yung assessment nila, nakikita namin na may mga nagkukulang. Like for example, mayroong mga misconceptions along the way. So from there, we will readjust. And I think during those times, those are the times na it's the best time to make mistakes. Sabi nga nila, di ba? If you will remember the... The, the webinar facilitated by Dr. Yeban of the Philippine Normal University, yung panahon na to ang best time to make mistakes. Kasi bago lahat sa atin eh. Kahit sa mga parents bago to, sa mga estudyante bago to, sa atin bago to. And as we commit these mistakes, we can discover along the way what are the most effective modalities that we can give to our, to our students. So I think since you already have, we already have the most essential learning competencies given by the Department of Education, it will be easier for us to focus the content. However, in the, in the identification of the essential ideas of our content as we cascade our instruction, importantly then that we take into consideration the nature of our subject. Because like for example, we've been attending webinars for quite some time, pero siyempre, paano ang mathematics ko, di ba? Paano yung chemistry ko? Paano yung araling panlipunan ko? Paano yung technology and livelihood education ko? Paano yung English ko? From there, I think it's it's okay to uh, focus on ano ba yung magiging relevance ng subject natin. Like for example, kunyari kami sa chemistry, would it be about appreciation about food analysis ba yan? Or about the contents of the food that they eat? Importante na malaman natin yun. Kasi may mga bagay na pwede nating i-deliver asynchronously. Medro naman ng mga bagay na dapat synchronously. Okay? So that's the first one. Um, streamlining the contents. The third one, sorry, that's the second one. The third one would be about importante yung scheduling. Okay? Importante yung scheduling. Paano natin i-communicate sa mga learners natin, sa mga parents natin, paano yung magiging takbo ng instruction. So in our school, it so happened na ako po ay grade level head teacher sa so USC Junior High School. Nakikita ko yung pangyayari, di ba? Nakikita ko yung mga nangyayari from day one until the last day of the online teaching. So what we did, in a weekly basis, nagbibigay kami ng calendar ng activities from Monday to Friday. Nakalagay dyan yung mga topics nila. Nakalagay din dyan yung ano yung magiging mode, asynchronous ba yan or synchronous ba yan, or ano ba yung magiging instruction ng teacher. Nakalagay dyan. So nakikita namin na from here, um, more or less, na-avoid namin yung digital fatigue sa mga estudyante namin. Kasi unti-unti siya. Into chunks siya. Into chunks. In other words, yung development ng lesson, hindi siya isang buhusan. It's one at a time. Para masabayan tayo ng mga estudyante. In my class, in, a, in my chemistry class, what I did is dinibide ko into chunks yung mga lesson. For example, we started with gas loss. In a face-to-face -face setup, we usually teach the gas loss. Buuan yan, kabuuan ng gas loss. But in the online instruction, what I did, dinibide ko siya into the different law. So I have one I have one instruction for the properties of gas. I have one for Boyle's law, one for Charles law, one for Abontons, one for combined, and one for ideal gas. So ibig sabihin, um, by chunk siya, nakadivide siya para nakapokus yung estudyante namin. Para nakapokus siya sa content o sa concept na dapat niyang maintindihan. So that's the third one. Chunking. Dividing the concept into, into chunking. The fourth one, aside from our instruction to our students, it is also important to create consistent communication platforms. We have our LMS in the University of Santo Tomas. And we can actually communicate there. But in based on my experience, I have another way of communicating to my students para makarating yung mga instruction na, na gusto ko maiparating sa kanila, not only for the students, but also for the learners. Okay? So what I did, of course, I really need to make a Facebook group to the parents. 
we're in a cascade, the, the instruction or the announcements coming from the school. But this is not enough. Syempre, you need to consider, do they have internet connectivity? Do they have a strong internet connectivity? Ma-access ba nila yung mga information? Um, Ma-iintindihan ma ma ba nila yung mga communication coming from the school? So what I did, I still need to utilize um, text brigades. Kaya kung mapapansin niyo po dyan, from time to time, like for example, good morning po. Today po ay may long test po sila sa CLE ng 10 a.m. at BB Collab at 10.30 and so on and so forth. So I need to maximize the use of this different um, communication platforms. And also, I also made a Facebook groups per section. So makikita niyo po dyan, these are my section. I have a Facebook group for one section here, the Cornelius. I have for the parents of Clement. I have for Crispin. I have for Constantine. So madami siya. I did this one while um, um, facing all the challenges na dumadating. Kasi mayroong mga bagay na hindi natin pwedeng ipilit. Like for example, gusto mo ganito yung mangyari, mag-online teaching ka, magsisynchronous teaching ka, kaya lang may mga estudyante na pwedeng hindi makasabay. So in that case, we really need to uh, set some consistent communication platforms para makasabay yung ibang mga estudyante po natin. This is also the best time for the school, I think, to open the doors for the parents. Because dito magpe-play ng importanteng mga role yung mga parents natin. Since sabi nga nila, di ba, yung face-to-face, -face, kapag ka yung estudyante nasa classroom natin, we are called as uh, the second parents, di ba, loko parentis daw. I think in a digital setting where the students are at their home with their family, with their parents, we consider now the parents, although they are the first teacher, now we consider them as the second teachers. Okay? Parang magiging pseudo-teachers sila. Pag sinabi natin magiging pseudo teachers yung mga parents natin, aside from um, guiding them dun sa academic aspect na binibigay po natin, it is also expected from them na dapat nagagaide din nila pagdating sa values education ng mga bata, pagdating sa time management ng mga estudyante, o di kaya naman ay pagdating sa pag-self-regulate ng learning. It's actually a shared responsibility. It needs to be a mutual process. Okay, it needs to be a mutual process wherein us teachers will give the direction sa learning, but it needs to be complemented by the parents. We are expecting, for, of course, in the beginning, kasi nga sabi ko sa inyo, emergency remote teaching, we expect sa mga reklamo ng mga parents, and we understand that, kasi bago din sila dito. But from time to time, uh, they get to realize na talagang dapat maging flexible tayo, mag-adjust tayo dun sa... Um, magiging set up ng learning ng mga estudyante natin. Pagdating naman sa mga teachers, sabi nga nila, medyo kailangan sabayan din natin yung mga parents natin tsaka yung mga estudyante. Ito yung sinasabi nila na dapat goodbye Mrs. Tapiana, di ba? Hindi na dapat yung sungit-sungitan tayo dito. Pwede tayo maging firm sa mga instruction natin, sa mga rules natin, sa mga instruction natin sa kanila. Pero at the same time, we also need to get to understand where the students and the parents are coming from. Okay. The fifth one is we need to familiarize ourselves with the LMS or the learning management system. We have this learning management system in the university. We call that the cloud campus. It's a Blackboard platform. But based on experience, I have not been using this one for, for so long. Um, previously, for the past 11 years, I have been using the platform just to deploy yung mga materials na pwedeng makasupplement sa learning ng mga estudyante. It is new sa akin na magkaroon ng uh, um, synchronous teaching using the Blackboard Collaborate. So it, it, it was a challenge for me. But because of the assistance of our e-learning specialist, hello po Ma'am Irene, um, I got to study and navigate all the features of the Cloud Campus. Cloud Campus po sa LMS natin. Okay, so kailangan pamilya tayo dito. Kasi ang Cloud Campus, ang magiging alternate, ang LMS, ang magiging alternative classroom natin para mamigrate natin yung structure ng face-to-face -face instruction into online setting. Okay, so dapat pamilya tayo dito. Actually, um, it took me a lot of rehearsals. It took me a lot of practices just to become familiar with the different parts of the LMS, the learning management system. Kasi nga, syempre, Dapat, as you face the students in front of the screen, pag nandiyan na sila, dapat ma-feel nila din na medyo organized din. And at the same time, maramdaman nila na as much as possible, nalilesen natin yung, yung boundaries that divide us virtually. 
Okay, so the LMS. So what happened from day, day to day, pinag-aaralan ko yung mga parts ng LMS and nagre-raise ako ng mga questions sa e-learning specialist namin para matulungan niya ako paano ko ma matotroubleshoot yung mga possible na mga problems na, na mag-arise while we are discussing online or while we are facilitating our instruction. Okay, like for example, this one. Okay. Whatever will be the LMS, it is important that we are familiar with that one. And I suggest that we do rehearsal. Especially, we have a lot of time now. Siyempre, August pa daw opening of the school year natin. Uh, we have a lot of time to do rehearsal, to practice as if you are facing your students or um, as if you are already discussing to them a particular lesson. The one that you can see on the screen, by the way, what I am presenting for are what we call pedagogical data from my research. And I asked permission from the different parties um, to allow me use these pictures and screenshots just to convey the narration of my experiences to you in this online teaching experience. So makikita nyo po dyan, yung mga screenshot yan, yung mga uh, pictures na mga uh, engagement ko po with the rehearsals, like for example, communication ko with the e-learning specialists at sa other teachers, kung paano ba ginagawa yung mga um, assessment, paano namin makokontrol yung privacy setup nung, nung LMS, and so on and so forth. And I, I, I find it um, effective whenever kapag pinuruan tayo sa school natin, for example, yung mga natututunan natin sa mga webinar, kapag ka, um, tinuturo natin sa iba yung natututunan natin, nagiging effective siya. So there you can see that I asked some of my colleagues in USC Junior High School kung pwede akong magturo sa kanila ng ganito para more or less ay alam ko din paano siya gagamitin at alam ko yung troubleshooting. Okay? It's a, it's a trial and error. Pero sabi ko nga, it's the best time to, to make mistakes. Talagang magkakamali tayo dito. But along the way, as we, as we discover those mistakes o yung mga loopholes natin, we will realize eventually na dapat pala ganito yung direction natin sa ganitong setup. So that's the tip um um, key point of my experience in online setting. The sixth one is important then uh, we need to create a routine, a structure of learning. Kasi bago siya eh. Mabugulaga yung mga studyante natin, di ba? What do I mean na we need to create a learning structure or routine? If in the face-to-face -face instruction, we do motivation, we do the development of the lessons using different teaching strategies, um, we do this kind of assessment, we do the synthesis or the generalization. It is also important that we migrate this structure in the virtual setting, in the online setting, whether it is in a form of um, a module or using the synchronous instruction. Dapat maramdaman ng bata more or less na pagpunta niya doon sa online setting, yun pa din ang development ng lesson. Dapat yun pa din yung magiging guide niya in the development of lesson. What we did, what is on the screen po now is a screenshot of one of the parts of our learning management system. Naglagay po ako ng mga folders dyan. May folder para sa mga videos, folder para sa mga seat works, may folder para sa mga learning activities, folder para sa mga reviewers. Para when, they, when my students navigate the platform or the LMS, alam nila kung saan sila pupunta. But the question here, of course, hindi naman lahat may LMS, di ba? Hindi naman lahat are, um, merong ganitong structure ng LMS. Like, pwede naman, for example, na if you are using a Google Drive, maglalagay tayo ng mga folders doon, dapat alam ng mga bata kung ano yung pupuntahan nila na content ng instruction natin para hindi silang maliligaw. Or using this one, whenever I announce something, like for example, if I say, um, I provided the supplementary material about gas loss, alam nila kung saan nila kukunin. Through this, we can lessen yung mga barriers sa communication. Okay? Especially the students are not with, with us. Okay? That's the sixth key point. Okay? Another portion of the, the LMS that we are using. Actually, teachers, it's not with the LMS. It's, it depends upon us. Tayo yung magbibigay buhay. Paano natin mamamigrate yung face-to-face -face instruction into a virtual setting? The seventh one is, um, yun nga, hindi lahat may LMS, but we are creative. Later, you will see paano tayo mag magiging creative kung, kung wala tayong LMS or how can we use 
things that we that what we have, something like that. The seventh um, key point is the curation of learning content. Okay, what do I mean whenever I say curation of learning content? When I say curation of learning content, I'll show to you some of the slides that I use in the discussion of organic chemistry. When I say um, curation of learning content, you are actually um, integrating different sources for you to migrate your instruction. I'll allow me to share with you an analogy on how can we effectively curate learning content. Pag sinabi yan, curation of learning content, yung learning package, that's the best term for that. Yung learning package na ibibigay natin sa mga estudyante natin in a particular lesson or in a particular content. Ano yung mga ginagawa natin? There was a time inside our group chat among my colleagues in the grade nine level, they are talking about um, K-drama, right? They are talking about K-drama. Some are asking what is the best K-drama to watch. Some are asking um, um, what, what would be the, the story of this kind of K-drama, something like that. Tapos narinig ko, nag-Netflix sila, nanonood sila ng mga K-drama. Tapos sabi ko, naisip ko tuloy, nagtanong ako, one of my co-teachers, sabi ko, bakit kaya, ano, bakit nahuhook tayo lahat, di ba? Iba't ibang mga tao, bata man yan, may edad man yan, professional man o di professional, nahuhook sila sa K-drama, di ba? Ang sabi nila, iba daw yung storya, iba daw yung mga twist, sobrang kakaiba daw siya as compared to Filipino genre ng mga teleserye, di ba? So from there, na-realize ko, whenever we curate learning content, in our instruction, in our teaching, it's just like we are making a story. Diba? We are making a story. And in that story, we need to choose critically the characters inside the story. These characters are yung motivations natin, na binibay sa mga bata, yung content ng lesson natin, yung kind ng assessment natin, yung uri ng presentation ng mga, ng mga concepts natin, something like that. And our purpose, just like a K-drama, we want the viewers to look forward what will be the next episode. We want our viewers to look forward what will be our next episode. In our um, scenario as a teacher, like for example, day one will be your, ito yung instruction mo, you want your students to look forward for the next lesson. Diba? You want them to be hooked, sa, sa, to be hooked sa, sa lesson na binibigay natin sa kanila. Ako what I did, for example, Importante dito yung tinatawag natin na triggering event, di ba? Pag sinabi natin triggering event, in the beginning of the development of the lesson, there is a case, there is an issue, there is a scenario, there is a problem in which kapag ka nakita ng bata, module man yan or online learning man yan, na na nakakabus ng kanilang curiosity or interest nila. For example, when we were teaching... Um, gas loss, our introduction during the time is to assess the air quality index in Metro Manila during the enhanced community quarantine. So from there, medyo lumalapit sa context. Kino-contextualize natin kung paano mas makakasabay yung bata. Bakit namin ito pinapag-aralan? Bakit relevant yung lesson na ito sa amin? Or for example, dito, yung nasa screen po natin, my lesson during the time was organic chemistry and I started the lesson with the ingredients, okay, and the procedure, the recipe, and how to cook kare kare. Though I am not really cooking, but when I presented that to them and I asked them, what do they think are the ingredients in kare kare? Lahat sila, nagaano sila, nagpa-participate sila in the online discussion because they are aware about kare kare, di ba? So what is the, 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 bottom line, the bottom line here? The bottom line here is whenever we curate learning content, the material itself needs to communicate to the student. Dapat nagko-communicate yung students. Hindi na siya yung usual na mga PowerPoint presentation na we have the first slide and the, the, the overview of the lesson. Then we have the development of the content, di ba? May mga ganun. Dapat yung, yung content mismo, kunyari gagamit tayo ng PowerPoint presentation, yung content mismo, nagko-communicate siya as if you are talking to the students. As if the student is in front of you. So pwede kayong maglagay ng mga questions. Like for example, dito sa lower part ng screen natin, Example sa organic compound. If first time makikita ng mga estudyante ko yung mga molecular structure na ganyan. So I have there one question. Do you know the uses of these organic compounds? If you can attend, share them in our BB collab next week. So parang meron siyang uh, teaser, di ba? Meron siyang trailer para 
alam nila na dapat maintindihan ko to, bakit may mga lines, bakit may mga dots, bakit ganito yung mga molecular structure and so on and so forth. At pag sa tingin natin, merong mga lessons na talagang more or less ay complicated o alam natin na dapat may assistance ang teacher, naglalagay ako ng mga disclaimer. Like for example, do not be overwhelmed by the chemical structures that you can see in the next slides. You will discover the meanings of those lines and turns along the way. There are pa patterns. I tell you, it's very easy. So something like that. So dapat the material themselves need to, to communicate to our students. So it's just like a making a story of learning. We've been doing this one before. We are doing stories for so long when we are inside the classroom, face to face. But the difference here is as we do the stories of learning, the students are not with us. Before, madali eh, kapag binubuo natin ang storya ng pagkatuto, di ba? Kasi if you want to try a certain teaching strategy, you can see whether it is effective in the first class. And if it is not, you can improve to the next class. If it is effective, you can repeat that to the third class. But now, the challenge is the learners who are the recipients of the knowledge that we will share are not with us. So, ang tanong dito, paano tayo magdadrop ng mga materials that can communicate to our learners? Paano tayo magpapakapag-drop ng mga instructional tools when we're in kapag ginamit ng mga estudyante natin maiintindihan nila kung saan ba natin sila gustong dalhin. Okay? So that's the curation of the learning content. Aside from preparing, by the way, we were doing this one during this, those three months. We really, we really need to adjust and become flexible because as from time to time, may mga challenges na na-encounter kami. Okay. How about the eight key point? The eight key point is we need to set and manage the expectations. Though I, use the, I usually facilitate this one, this announcement portion ng LMS, or pwede naman sa Facebook group. Actually, ang Facebook group, yung ibang mga schools, they started exploring how can it be utilized as a form of learning management system. And that's good. Kasi talagang what we can, uh, what we can do is to maximize lang what, what, what do we have, di ba? Uh, we need to set and manage expectations. It is important that we inform our students, ano ba yung expectation from that lesson? What skills are we expecting them to, to possess at the end of the instruction? Or what are the requirements that we want them to accomplish at the end of the, the lesson? So we need to set that and manage at the same time. Important is very, uh, very important here is communication. Dapat communicate natin from time to time to our learners. And we really need to extend our time. Kasi, hindi natin alam, like for example, if we have 40 students or we have 45 students in your class, not all of them ay makakasabay sa atin, di ba? Maganda na siguro kung 70% of the class makakasabay, but the rest, because of our acknowledged problems like the internet connectivity, we really need to extend our communication to them. That's the eighth a key point. The main key point is, sabi ko nga sa inyo, dapat mahook sila, ma-engage yung mga estudyante natin online. Kailangan natin makaisip ng mga triggering event para more or less hindi siya boring. Kasi iba to eh. Yes, we acknowledge that most of our students are aware about the use of gadgets, di ba? About the use of phones, the use of tablets, the use of desktop, uh, laptops. Alam naman nila yun eh. Kaya lang, if we are going to stream, streamline completely, streamline, na, streamline natin completely, yung online setting, yung online instruction, dapat mas makita nila ngayon yung benefits this time ng technology pagdating naman sa learning. Kasi hindi ibig sabihin na, yes, you have the gadgets, but most of the time, students nowadays are aware, gadgets is just to check the social media, to play online games, something like that. Dapat, Manavigate natin sila or marikalibrate natin sila into a perspective we're in. Whenever they use the, the gadget, learning is there. The classroom is there. My teacher is there. My classmates are there. Di ba? Kasi ano to eh, parang um, tayo nag adjust tayo, di ba? nag adjust tayo. Of course, nag adjust tayo lahat. At we are trying to as much as possible makasabay tayo kung ano ba yung demands ng new normal education na to. But at the same time, we also need to find ways paano makakapag-adjust yung mga estudyante natin. 
whenever they are already in the instructional setting. Like for example, there on the screen, what I did was, um, yeah, pinakita ko yung, we were, we were discussing that time, the different functional groups in organic chemistry. So what I did, yun nga, pinakita ko yung mga different ingredients and I identified to them some of the important molecular compounds that can be found on those ingredients. So from there, na ano sila, although medyo, medyo corny yung tingnan, sabi nila, nosebleed, something like that. But medyo nabubus natin yung curiosity nila na dapat pala um, intindihin natin yung mga kinakain natin kasi meron silang ganitong mga constituents sa mga chemical compounds. So we need to hook them. But hooking them needs to be tahi-tahi dapat siya. Okay? Yung triggering event na ibibigay natin sa kanila in the beginning of the instruction needs to manifest as well in the assessment. Dapat dire-diretso siya. Like, while well, well, we are discussing, dapat ini-incorporate yung food analysis, um, about yung healthy lifestyle, about the components of the foods that, that they eat, ano ba dapat yung mga dapat nilang bawa, um, iwasan, and so on, and, and so forth. Okay, so that's the nine key points. Like, for example, that one, my examples would be contextualized. Dapat nakakasabay sila, dapat alam nila na ah, meron palang ganun ng mga bagay-bagay. Hindi lang sila aware about the, the chemical compositions. That's the ninth one. The ten key points, of course, yung follow-up natin, follow-up ng instruction natin, dapat kung hindi talaga applicable sa lahat yung LMS or yung, yung learning management system, we need to maximize other, other platform of information. Like for example, there, I use actually Facebook group there announcing that there is a scheduled online classes the following week. Like for example, good morning class, in preparation for our science online class on Monday, please be reminded of the following, please read caption per picture. So something like that. We really need to be creative on how to relate to the students our instruction. So ito po ay iba pa yung, yung text to them, yung group chat to them, kasi hindi natin alam eh. Sino ba yung hindi nakakapagbukas ng group chat? Sino ba yung hindi nakakapag... Walang Facebook, for example, na parents? Um, more or less, at least, all the stakeholders, especially the parents and the, the students, are aware what's going on in a particular class. Okay. Okay. As we carry our instruction, <laughs> syempre dapat natin enjoy yan, we need to be reminded that not to one size fits all it will not work for all. There are stories along the way that we can discover. It can be some personal stories. It can be technical stories. It can be instructional stories or academic in nature. But we don't have any choice but to accept these kind of stories. Ito sila, lalo na biglaan to sa atin, di ba? As we, as we are adjusting to this mode of education, all the learners and the parents too are adjusting. Like for example, ito po, with the permission of the parents po, um, in-screenshot ko po yung communication ko sa kanila. Ito po yung mga story na nadidiscover ko along the way. Okay? Na, na pwedeng maging challenge sa atin. Na hindi natin pwedeng ipilit na ito dapat yung gagawin ng mga estudyante natin. For example, here, last April 15. Good afternoon, sir. Okay lang po ba na malate po sa pagsagot ng mga seatwork sa Cloud Campus? Medyo mahirap po kasi talaga internet connection namin dito sa province. Kailangan pa po kasing pumunta ng bayan para po sa maayos sa internet. You look at that scenario, di ba? Considering na may pandemic pa during the... Uh, may pandemic, di ba? Another one is, Opo sir, I'll try my best to accomplish as much as I can po. Ang problem ko po kasi is, when I open the files you send po, na-open po siya, but it takes really long. Pero pag yung activities po and pag magpa-pass online, isang oras mahigit na po eh, hindi na po nag-open. Sinabi ko lang po para alam nyo din po. Okay? So it's good that our students are aware that they really need to inform the teachers. And it is actually an advice to the parents na if you think that there are problems, like for example, accessing the, the instructions coming from the teacher, importante na marilay niyo yung communication. Importante na malaman ng teachers kung where are you coming from. Kasi baka magkaroon ng impression na you are just ignoring yung pinapagawa sa mga bata. Importante na alam po natin to. Or, sa pagdating sa assessment, Hi sir, good afternoon po. Ilan po ang passing score sa long test? That's long test. Napasin ko po na, na tense po si blank. 
Maga, mabagal po kasi siya mag-analyze, natataranta po siya kanina. Kan may mga sudyante tayong ganito and we cannot, we cannot deny na we really need to make our instruction as inclusive as possible. We need to um, consider this kind of learners, especially those that are not used to um, the online setting o hindi sila nakakasabay, especially kapag limited yung guidance ng teacher. Or lastly, for example, this one, last May 26. Good evening po, sir. Sorry po kasi hindi po ako nakakasagot sa messages at calls po ninyo. Kasi po, sir, hindi po ako dito sa bahay parati nag-stay. Madalas po akong nasa bahay ng brother at mama ko po. Nakikigamit lang po ako ng cellphone ng pamangkin ko at hindi naman po sinasabi sa akin na tumatawag at nagme-message po kayo. Sorry po talaga. Sir, sorry po at ngayon ko lang po na ipadala sa messenger niyo yung letter. Thank you very much, Sir Ryan, and God bless po. So may mga stories sa inyo madidiscover along the way. And tayo, bilang mga teachers, kailangan nating i-realign yung storya natin. Kailangan mag-adjust yung kwento natin. If we started with this kind of learning package sa mga estudyante natin, along the way, we need to become flexible and make deviate from the original stories. Kaya nga sabi nila, sa K-drama, may mga twist, di ba? May mga twist tayong na nakikita na talagang nakaka nakakamangha. So, siguro sa atin bilang teacher, yung mga twist na to, yung mga challenges na to, let's consider that as an opportunity to exercise pa. What else can we do? What else can we give? What else can we offer to our learners? Okay? Okay. Um, the 11 key point, after the instruction, after discussing online, we need to open opportunity for individual feedback. Diba? We need to open opportunity for individual feedback. Ang hirap kasi, di ba? Kahit ang mga parents, they will question like, for example, ano yung assurance that the students are really learning online or that the students are really learning from the module? Di ba? Ano yung assurance? So siguro, we cannot do, um, what we can do is just to open this opportunity for individual feedback. Ako po, minaximize ko yung paggamit ng messenger para mas mag ko yung mga estudyante para mas makapagbigay ako ng feedback sa progress ng learning po nila. Like for example, yung mga question na ganyan, pwede ding text, wala tayong magagawa kung talagang yun yung access nila sa, sa information or sa, sa instruction natin. Open opportunity for individual feedback. If we will be venturing into online teaching, ako po, based on my experience, like for example, if the class will be facilitated on Monday, as early as Friday, I already deployed the materials to students. Whether it's a module, whether it's a video, whether it's a PowerPoint presentation, I give it to them earlier, okay? Because I gave them the instruction to read it in advance, okay? To analyze in advance kung ano man po yung content ng instruction. And eventually, during the synchronous teaching, you will focus more on emphasis of the content, um, clarification of the content, diba? or um, entertaining the questions from our students. Diba? Kasi pag nag-start pa lang tayo ng instruction, sa, sa actual na synchronous teaching, it will add time pa. Remember, they are, they are facing the internet. They are facing the, the screen. Sorry. Um, we want to lessen the digital fatigue of our students na wag lang puro nakaharap sa, sa screen yung mga estudyante natin. So probably we can we can devise ways like letting them read books if we have textbooks na sa instruction natin online nakalagay read page 45 to 46, something like that. And be ready for our discussion on Monday. We can do that. But more or less, lalo na kung pare-pare sila ng textbook, pagdating sa actual instruction, we can expect for optimum participation of our of our students. Okay. That's the 11th one. We need to open opportunity for individual feedback. Okay, like for example, this one, before we do assessment, we need to have session for Q&A about what are the misconceptions, about the concepts or lessons which they think are not clear. Okay, so we can do that. That's the 11th. Key point. The twelfth one, we will be having assessment this time. Okay? Yes, it's true. Assessment is a challenge now in an online setting. With my communication with my other grade level teachers, Sir Fred and Mom Greg, um, syempre, hindi mo natin may iwasan minsan. Kikwestiyonin mo, di ba? Bakit yung iba bilang tumaas yung score? Bakit yung iba ganito yung mga score? 
something like that, diba, questionable. It's a challenge for us to devise very good assessment strategies in order for us to really measure whether the students are really learning or not. Okay, so what we did, ayan, the first troubleshooting that we did is, aside from the multiple choice, we asked our students to, to give us the actual copy of the, of the solution to the problem. And based on my experience, all of them complied, majority of them, majority of them complied. But still, we are not sure about relevant ba yung natutunan nila from us? Nakuha ba nila yung essential idea that the lesson is trying to convey to them? Nakuha ba nila yon? Kapag ba nag-grade 10 na sila, may students grade 10 ngayon, magagamit ba nila to? Pag nag-senior high school ba sila, magagamit ba nila? Paano natin siya ma-assess? So challenge po yan. So what we did, we focus on authentic and reflective assessments. Um, with my webinar yesterday, it was faced by some of the of teachers sa bandang Nueva Ecija po, na talagang challenge yung assessment. Here, I think, we really need to recalibrate our perspective about giving assessment by lessening on the objective type of test. Instead, we focus on more authentic and reflective assessment. The liter literature will tell us that in an online setting, especially sa iba't ibang mga bansa, what are they using sa assessment ng online? They are using the e-portfolio, di ba? In the e-portfolio, you get to see the progress of the students by chunks, by chunk, yung progress ng estudyante. Para medyo, more or less, nakikita natin may effort yung mga bata at hindi lang sila pumipili ng A, letter A, letter B, or letter C. So what we did po in our instruction, we don't give this kind of um, output to our students during the face-to-face. -face. Kasi po before, in the face-to-face, -face, the bulk of the grade that we, the, we give to students will be coming from the experiments, diba? from the face-to-face. -face. We have um, a higher percentage there. Kaya sabi namin, challenge ito ngayon, how can we have the virtual experiment? Diba? So what we did, so, kasi nga, three months lang yan, at biglaan po lahat, emergency remote teaching, we decided to let our students make infographics na lang ng organic food. But we want them to enjoy cooking this food together with their parents. Okay? Without compromising the competencies or the set of standards mandated by the Department of Education. So we asked them to make organic food, uh, organic food infographics because we think they're good in a digital output, di ba? They are good in a digital output. But syempre, hindi naman lagi dapat na ganito. But because of the limitation of time, we ventured into this kind of um, authentic assessment. Ito po siya. And then, while the students are completing the output, I ask them to update me from time to time or allow me to comment sa mga naging output nila para ma-improve pa po nila. Para more or less, nakikita natin yung yung effective part ng assessment natin. Hindi lang puro tama o mali ang sagot ng bata. Nakikita natin yung progress, di ba? Nakikita natin na ito pala yung pagkakaintindi niya sa instruction. Ito pala yung pagkakaintindi niya sa mga organic compounds. Again, communication here is, is very crucial. Okay, it's very crucial yung communication po natin sa kanila. So ganyan, I communicate to them. I got to uh, reply to their queries about Sir, paano po pa ganito? Okay lang po ba ng structure po ng ganito ay ganyan? And so on and, and so forth. Okay, so like for example, these are some of the examples of the output submitted by the students. They were encouraged to enjoy the completion of the outputs together with their parents when they cook, yung, when they cook their, their organic food infographics. That's why assessment na siguro, it is also a shared responsibility. Kung objective ba yung magiging assessment natin or what, it's a shared responsibility between us, teachers, and the parents to let our students realize ano ba yung mga values na kailangan nating ituro sa kanila for them to see, to take seriously, kailan dapat sila magiging honest pagdating sa assessment. Okay, so re authentic assessment or reflective assessment. Reflective because I also ask them to do some reflections after completing the outputs. Okay, of course, hindi natin... Uh, dapat i-compromise kung ano ba yung concept na dapat. In this case, we have the organic chemistry. So, from time to time siya ganyan. I think Google Drive will work here. Okay, Google Doc will, will work here. Aside from the output, we have some reflections in connection to the different aspects of the, of the output. Okay, those are some of the reflections of my students. Okay.
Oh, yeah. Not self assessments. Okay. You let them assess their work. Is it? Papas sa isip nila eh. Ano bang ginawa ko doon? From 1 to 5. What will what will be my rating? Diba? What will be my rating dun sa assess sa sa output ko, sa digital output ko, diba? So from here, we encourage them to do reflection on their work. Okay. And then the fourteenth key point is we need to collaborate and share good practices. Okay, share good practices sa other teachers. Kapag nakita natin na this style is effective, we share it to them. If this style is not effective, we warn them not to use it. Like for example, the one on the screen, it's actually the group chats of the grade 9 teachers and a group chat with my grade level co-teachers sa chemistry. Yung isa dyan sa, sa bandang kaliwa, um, she is sharing about how to facilitate discussion during the online synchronous teaching. That's from Mom Irene. Hello po, Mom Irene. While dun sa right side, it's it's about um, yung paglalagay ng essay sa mga instruction. And that's from Mom Greg. Hi po, Mom Greg. Thank you for this. Okay? So nag-share. And then we encourage our teachers, lalo na yung mga coordinators po or yung mga, may mga position sa academic aspect. You build a community among your teachers wherein they continue to share their good practices para po makapag-build tayo ng community wherein Natututo tayo, hindi lang sa mga webinars na ina-attend natin, but because of the practices of our colleagues in the institution. Fifteenth, of course, you need to ask feedbacks. Okay? Tama ba? Okay po ba siya? Alam mo, nagturo ka ng ganito, you ask your student, mabilis po ba? Actually, may nag-message po sa akin ngayon. Medyo mabilis daw ng konti kanina simula yung, yung, yung webinar natin. Mabilis ba? Naiintindihan ba? Sometimes I ask my students, okay po ba yung audio ko kanina? Kasi po during the beginning of the online teaching, wala akong stable internet connection. I really need to look for a place where in the mobile data will work. So you get, uh, you ask feedbacks from the students, from your co-teachers, and even parents. Like for example, if you will allow them to, for example, ay walang internet connection and you send the material kasi we are expecting them to guide the children. That's the 15th one. We still have five. The 16th one is, let us give our students space to talk. Okay? Hindi lang puro academics. Hindi lang puro learning ng, ng ano, academics. Hindi lang puro assessment. Hindi lang puro mga activities na binibigay. Dapat we allot time. We give them the space to talk. We give them the space to share their feelings. Uh, what, are they, what are their experiences? Kumusta na sila? Ano bang ginagawa nila personally? Ano bang nangyayari sa mga bahay nila? You let them. You give them the space to share that. Pero syempre, sabi ko nga, lalo na po tayo mga teachers, since the beginning of the ECQ, sobra na tayong stress po lahat. Diba? Sobra nang nakakastress yung mga dapat natin gawin. Yung tsunami ng mga webinars na dapat natin i-apply, medyo gumugulo na sa mga isipan natin. Dapat we are also given the space to talk with one another. I think sa mga public teachers who have the last session, di ba? It will push through the last session. Let's get to communicate with our colleagues. Kumusta ka na? Oh. O kumusta naman yung instruction sa ganito? Something like that. We really need communication here. Para from time to time, magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag natin na detoxification ng mga, ng mga pinagagagawa po natin sa, sa school. Okay? Seventeenth would be you learn to appreciate your, let's appreciate them, our students. Kahit na virtual yan. Like for example, last May 16, after my students submitted all the outputs, I told them, hello class, good evening. I am enjoying your innovative organic recipes. Okay? It means something to them. It means a lot. Mararamdaman nila whatever was their output. Okay, their outputs. Um, you appreciate the output, di ba? It's a, it will not end in grading. It will not end in giving feedbacks. It will not end in um, rating or assessing them or reflecting. Sometimes we need to extend that by letting them realize that we are appreciate what, are they, what they are doing, not just as students, but as individuals. That's the number 17. Number 18, we still have three. 
be part of learning communities like this one. Okay, be part of learning communities like this one. Uh, my favorite um, learning uh, learning communities, of course, the Teach Hello Abiba Publishing House, um, the Teacher Summit by some teachers all over the Philippines, po, and the USC Cloud Campus uh, BB Virtual Demo, and you participate. Kung sa tingin po natin, pwede tayo mag-share, meron tayong dapat i-share, let us be part of learning communities. However, as we hear the different information from the webinars, it will not stop there. It will not stop there. We need to practice. We need to try. Okay? We need to try. Like, for example, kapag nag-introduce sila ng isang uh, platform o di kaya naman ay mga applications, we need to try that. If it will, if it will work, good. If it is not, thank you. Diba? The webinars will not just stay there. It will not just stay there. All the information. It needs to be cascaded into practice. Kasi dito natin mawe way out eh. Dito natin mawe way out from theory to practice. Will it work or will it not work? It depends upon us. So let's continue siguro. Pero at the same time, we, we need to learn how to filter. Ano yung mga pwede nating matutunan from, from the webinars that we are attending. Okay? So we be part of learning communities. Number 19, be reflective and open-minded. Sometimes, sa sobrang dami ng ginagawa natin, nakakalimutan nating mag-reflect, di ba? And this reflection is actually the reason, one of the reasons, why I published the research in Kimika. Nag-reflect ako, am I, am I still an effective teacher now while I'm discussing online? Nagagawa ko ba yung part ko as a teacher? Hindi ba nasa short range yung mga studyante ko? Tama ba yung assessment ko? Tama ba yung mga naririnig ko na feedback from the parents, from the students, from my co-teachers? We need to be reflective. Kasi nga sabi nila, kung mayroong isang pinakamaganda na naidulot ang pandemic na ito, pandemic pedagogy, is to reimagine our role as teacher, teachers. Yung identity natin na sa teacher. Ganito ako nung face-to-face. -face. Ano ako ngayon, di ba? We need to become relevant. We were always relevant. Lagi tayong relevant. But in this kind of setup, we need to be more relevant. We need to be more relevant. We can do that as reflection. Kaya po pag nabasa niyo po yung mga nakapagbasa po ng research, they are, they are commenting po yung mga nakabasa ng research. Um, it's a qualitative research. It's, it's an auto-ethnographic research. It's sub, it is subjective, actually. It's based on my personal narration because it is actually a result of my reflection as a teacher. It is a result of my reflection as a teacher, which I translated into a more academic output because I want to share it to other people. Because I want people also to uh, realize, pwede naman pala yung ganun. Ah, hindi pala nag-work yung ganun. That's why I accepted the invitation kay Ma'am Cora po to be part of this webinar series. Kasi nga, in the beginning kasi, uh, really, sabi ko, baka wala akong may share. But because of this publication of the research, I think you cannot share kasi kapag hindi natin na-experience to isang bag. We reflect in open-minded. And finally, we need to conduct further inquiry. Okay? I am currently doing research for related to pandemic pedagogy. Like, for example, this one, the science teacher's voices in the new normal teaching, a phenomenological study together with one of my co-teachers before and a friend, Sir Kerwin. And now our school together with Mam Karen Yoma is currently conducting the reassessment of the school's emergency remote learning experiences. We need to conduct further inquiry. Pwede tayo mag-research. Yung mga action research, they will push through. Push lang ang mga action research. Kasi mas maraming problem ngayon, mas maraming tayong pwedeng isolve. Mas maraming mga research questions na pwede nating erase. Okay? We can start with collaboration. Like, for example, napakita mo na effective yun, let's try to have a more um, empirical evidence that will tell us if it is really effective or not. Okay? So I also have some research uh, engagement with some of my other friends po from the other schools. Ongoing po yung mga yun. But for the meantime, ito yung medyo nakukomplete na po namin yung, yung cycle ng research. All these things are about the pandemic pedagogy that we have that I have been experienced for the last three months and that we are currently experiencing as we prepare next school year. Through here, we can evaluate the practices and at the same time, we can improve more 
our personal or institutional practices. Okay? Conduct further inquiry. My dear teachers, um, sabi nila, teach nation, the cornerstone of pandemic pedagogy is creativity. It's not about the LMS. Okay? It's about teachers' creativity. It's about reimagining what will be our role in this new normal mode of education. And as we reimagine what would be these roles waiting for us, dun mas nagiging ma matatag yung pinanggagalingan, why did we stay in this profession? Okay? Why did we pursue education? Sabi ko nga, siguro yung ano natin, yung first day ng school year, it's just like you are demo teaching. Di ba? Nung nag-apply tayo sa school na pinagtatrabawahan natin. It's just you are just demonstrating your, your lesson. And during that demo teaching, you were the best of all the best. Di ba? We want to be the best that we can be because we want to be higher. Just like that, let's recall that. Let's refresh that very first moment that we exercise our role as a teacher. We need to be the best that we can be. We need to um, have this perspective na cha medyo challenge, may challenges man that await us still through our creativity. Mas makikita natin saan ba tayo dapat lulugag bilang mga teachers sa mga studyante po natin. Um, yesterday, while I was um, preparing this presentation, my, my nephew forwarded a message to me through a group, through a chat. Nag-forward siya ng message. Nag-strike siya sa akin kasi para bang it's a reflection sa akin as a teacher. Tingnan niyo po yung message niya. Ang sabi niya, Tito Ray, bilhin mo daw po ng tablet si Gab Gab. Meron daw po na TIC 3020. Hindi po siya makapag-enroll. <laughs> Hindi daw po siya makapag-aral sa online kung walang tablet, Tito Ray. Niloko ko na lang ang sabi sa kanya. Sabi ng school, in fairness sa bata, alam po niya, hindi po, kailangan niya po talaga ng, sa pag-aaral siya, di ba po may coronavirus sa bahay po? Sa bahay po siya mag-aaral, kachat niya po yung teacher doon, doon po siya tuturo. Can you imagine that? That is what is in the mind of young learners. It's, she is an incoming grade 4, I think. That is in the mind. Teachers, the learners are preparing for us. Kung ano man yung kakayaan nila, they are preparing for us. To continue, to continue this learning as they prepare for us, we also need to prepare for them. Can you imagine that? A very innocent message na, kasi po magchat-chat po dun si teacher sa tablet. That is the, that is the new normal now. Kung baga, kinukonsider ng bata na hindi ako makakapunta ng school. Sa tablet lahat ang gagawin namin. Hindi na ako basta-basta maglalaro this time. Magtuturo na sa teacher sa tablet. Hindi lang ako basa-basa mag-open ng games. You know, this message is very striking. That's why I included the, this one in the presentation. It may be challenging sa, sa part po natin as, as teacher, but um, still, we can be flexible, we can be creative. But to sum up my presentation, allow me to share with you how can we become creative teachers in online teaching? This one is actually the conclusion of my research. That's why the, the, the title of my presentation is Reach Out, which means reinventing the wheel, explore different possibilities from what we have, align to the essential competencies, create learning structures and routines to our learners, Hook the learners through online engagement, offer means of consistent communication, use authentic and reflective assessments, and finally, we trust the process. At this point, I would like to thank you for being with me this morning to this Teach webinar by the Abiba Publishing House. But thank you, Abiba Publishing House, for inviting me. I would also like to thank the University of Santo Tomas for the great online teaching experience the University of Santo Tomas Junior High School, my colleagues there, my teachers in the grade nine level, um, the Philippine Normal University, mga professors ko po dyan, and mga classmates ko sa graduate school, and of course, yung mga teachers ko po sa San Isidro National High School, maraming maraming salamat mo for making me a teacher who am I now. Thank you and God bless us all.